So the first question we have, I see somebody, uh, Chris to put test. Yes, it's working. <laughs> so the first question, uh, John says, hi, Tim from Australia. We've put an easy board into the Ender 6 at some stage. Yes, I will. My stock board is having all sorts of issues where the Z motor just stops working. I'm assuming it's overheating. Um, it's a common issue with Creality's boards because they don't put enough copper on the boards. Um, as for when that's going to happen, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on with uh, Rocky Mountain Rep Rep coming up that we're doing. We gotta, we're getting our new booth designed and everything. Um, I don't have a ton of time to do that. So eventually, yes, when it's going to happen, I, I couldn't tell you. So, um, CBAT says, or actually before I move on to the next question, um, just so you guys are aware, if you guys are capable of swapping the board out and making sure all the connections are correct, the main thing on the Ender 6 is getting the end stop plugs onto the right pins because uh, I do have an easy board here. So on the signal pins here, on the X stop, Y stop, and Z stop, the, le the pin one, so the pin on the left, that is actually a ground pin. Now on the Ender 6, they share the ground pin for the end stop. So you gotta make sure that when you're putting the, the plug in here, and I don't know if the stock configuration matches our plug order. Um, it might, it may not. We literally have a 50-50 shot. I haven't put in the printer, so I couldn't tell you if it does. But that's the main thing is making sure you get the positives and the negatives right on the end stops. And then also I believe on the heater cartridge as well, there's also a shared pin on there. Um, so it's not as easy, it's not as easily done as the other boards. Uh, but you can use our DIY firmware, so we do have, and I'll show that uh, really quick. So let me, let me uh, load up a local copy of that really quick. Um, give me a second here. Let me make a local copy here. And I'll show you what our, our DIY firmware looks like uh, for the EasyBoard V2. So give me one sec. And this, the thing is, all of our DIY firmwares, those are all going to be set up the same. So if you use it on one board, you will be able to use it on other boards. And that's kind of uh, what I like to do because then it's it's consistent across all of the, the different machines. So let me switch over here. So this is the, um, I'm going to reload VS Code. I did all those file changes while it was open. So let me reload it just so we don't encounter any weird issues. All right, so this is the DIY firmware for our EasyBoard. This is available on our website. Um, if you go to the Help Center, um, it's the same setup. You open the Configuration H file, and this walks you through. So make sure you read all of this. This will tell you what um, what site or what, what LCDs to work with or what LCDs it works with. Um, and if you have the Ender 6 with the uh, LCD kit, you can just plug that right in. Um, you set your bed size, so your X, Y, and Z size, um, and then you just read here um, to change your motor direction um, if you need to. Basically, you you fire it up, flash the firmware, see what axis is moving the right way, which one's moving the wrong way. If one's moving the wrong way, you just change the false to a true. Um, same thing with the end stops. So you do the M119 test. So connect to the printer over the, the, the serial cable, like or not serial cable, but USB port with uh, something like Pronterface, and then you can go through and change the end stop. So basically, if you like, let's say your end stop is reporting open when you're pressing it and it should be triggered, you would just change this from a false to true. And it, it walks you through the setup here. So if you actually read here, it'll walk you through the setup. Um, and then the homing direction. So like on the Ender 6, um, X on that one homes to max, and I believe Y does. I believe it homes to max on X and Y, if memory serves correctly. Yeah, because the home position is in the back right corner. So that it homes a max on X and Y. So for the Ender 6, this would be a one for both of them. Um, the steps per millimeter, this would be, these are pretty standard values. Um, you could also look to get these values. You could look at our stock, like if you're doing on the Ender 6, you would look at the stock steps per millimeter um, value, I believe. It's this, all these are accurate for the Ender 6 stock, except for the E steps on the stock extruder. I think the stock extruder is a little bit higher than 95. Um, and then there, if you guys have used our firmware before, all this other stuff should be pretty um, pretty familiar to you. Because the goal is to basically have 
uh, the ability to use our firmware on a DIY printer or a non-supported model, uh, but still have the same experience on there. So we also have here to change what voltage it is. So you need to tell it if it's a 12 or 24 volt printer on a on an Ender 6, it'd be a 24 volt. So you would uncomment that line, um, that kind of thing. And then if you're using a filament sensor or if you're using a Creality sensor, um, the Ender 6 actually works with with the stock sensor. Yeah, with the stock sensor, it actually works with our Easy Out V2 enable line because um, it's the same logic. The stock Ender 6 sensor is the same logic as our Easy Out V2 sensors. And then there we have a, a sampling of different probe mounts as well. If you're using a probe mount that we have already set up, you can actually see all them in the backend file. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but you can see what we name all the probe mounts here. They're at the very top under the ABL probe settings. And you can see all the different ones. So like here, Ender 6 Pets Fang, that's one. And that'll be in the Ender 6 firmware config. They're just not in the DIY config because you can see it get very cluttered very quickly. Um, but if you're using like the OEM mount, we already have that in there. So you can just copy this and then paste that in um, right where you want to here. Just do a define and then Ender 6 OEM and that'll pull the backend files here. This should light up. VS Code takes a sec. Do you guys ever notice that the predictive like code doesn't always work? I don't know what the, I don't know what the term they use for it, but basically if like something um, is enabled, um, it will sometimes light up the blocks of text. Sometimes it won't. Um, don't know why, just something I've noticed. Um, it's kind of frustrating because normally if it was all working um, and doing stuff that it should, this block should light up because I put this in the configuration. So anyways, um, yeah, you can do the setup here and then the Ender 6 is either going to use the Core XY or the Core YX setting. I believe it uses the Core YX. If you connect XX and Y to Y, um, it's still technically a Core XY printer. It's just which which uh, plug or what driver the motors are mapped to. So um, I believe it's a Core YX um, in terms of the config. So we have those two options. So basically with this DIY firmware, you can set up everything for your printer, even if it's not a supported model. So, and I think I, I think I uncommented everything I need to do. I think the printer voltage is the last thing um, that it'll throw an error on if you don't, because we don't defa by default uncomment the printer voltage. Where was that? I think that was up here, wasn't it? Yeah, right here. So, but then it'll compile. You can also then upload, um, if you don't want to compile it on your computer, you can actually just edit this file with like something like Notepad++. Um, so like I use Notepad++ here quite frequently. Um, but uh, yeah, you can also upload this to the Easy Firmware site. These DIY configs are compilable, compilable on the Easy Firmware site. Um, I use the Easy Firmware site uh, personally for when I'm doing just like random printer builds, but if I'm messing around with stuff, I'll just use VS Code on my computer here. But both of them are an option. Um, you just don't have the DIY config on the Easy Firmware site just because it'd be a lot to, to do and we want to keep that site as simple as possible. But you can download that config file, edit it on your computer, and then upload it back to the Easy Firmware site to have our server compile it if you do like have a, a slow computer or VS Code isn't playing nicely, that kind of thing. Um, so, and the Easy Firmware side of the DIY configs, those only work with our Easy Boards. Um, we won't be opening that up to other boards just because we don't want to be paying for CPU time um, for products that are not, you know, ours. So we don't want it to get overwhelmed. So, anyways, um, yeah, so hopefully that gives you an insight. There's, there's a lot of people using our board with the Ender 6 with the DIY config right now. So, um... Yeah, but I like to actually test everything. Like, I don't know if you guys saw me carry the SV1 Pro out. I like to physically test the code and the hardware on an actual machine before I tell everybody it's going to work um, because I don't want to say that, yeah, this works perfectly. Just pop it in there and update the code. Um, I haven't done that. My Ender 6 that's behind me is still running the stock board. And like I said, it is having issues with the Z driver. I don't know if anybody who has Ender 6 have, has also experienced that. I think it's because mine is one of the newer revisions of the, or one of the older revisions of the board where it has the trinamic drivers on the X, Y, Z, and E. Um, I've been told that the later board versions only have the trinamic drivers on the X and Y. And I suspect it's because they were having issues with the Z and the E drivers overheating on that machine. So I'm just speculating, but I have heard other people told me that they, their, their boards don't have silent drivers on the Z and E, but it's on the X and Y. If you like this clip, this is taken from our Ask Tim stream that we do every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central Time. So if you want to watch that whole stream, you can go ahead and click here. 
Otherwise, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure to change the bell to all notifications to get notified when we go live in the future.